Hello YouTube, Das Gregor for another Linux distribution demonstration and review, first impression. Today we're going to be looking at Salix OS. Salix is another Slackware based distribution. This right now is the XFCE version of this. The nice thing about Salix, if we look at what you can download and their website, they have XFCE, KDE, Mate, LXDE, Fluxbox, and although I've never heard of it, Rat Poison. I decided to go with the XFCE for this uh, first impression because it was the only one of all of them that came with the Salix 64 14.0.1 and since I had done Slackle a couple weeks ago with it which was at 14.0 and also Slackware at 14.0 I wanted to keep them all at the same level I didn't want to have to downgrade to 13.37 uh, just to be able to do the KDE so we are going to be looking at XFCE now as you can see here you can download this in two different ways you can get it from just the installation disk or you can go ahead and get a live disk image I didn't go with the live disk image because it hasn't been updated yet to 14.0.1 so I just went ahead and installed it straight from the install uh, version by placing it on my thumb drive I use this little guy here which is a 6 gig um, bigger than a thumb drive but it acts just like one now, one thing I have found that is many times when I do build a system I don't want to waste DVDs or CDs just to burn them one time and then end up with a distribution that's going to be outdated in a few months and I don't want to reuse it again so I hate to burn media but if you ever decide that you want to do that the commands quite simple using DD and one thing you might want to always try on your ISOs before you use DD to, to burn them to a, a USB stuck is use the ISO hybrid command. I have found on many broken ISOs or ISOs that are hardwired to really be on a CD, I found by using ISO hybrid first, I'm able then to put it on the USB stuck and not have a problem whatsoever booting to them. At least I haven't run into one yet. Knock on wood somewhere, <laughs> I might run into one someday. Salix is an interesting um, flavor. It's a little lightweight in my opinion. I kind of thought it may have a little bit more to offer since Slackle is based off of Salix and Slackware and Salix is probably a little bit closer to Slackware so I was a little disappointed in that respect uh, I had to install a lot more packages from GSLAPT and use the sorcery uh, repository for software to get a lot of little things to work right up front so I could do my update and my video here if we go on I'm just going to put that back to its main OS here and if we look at, as I said, this is XFCE, a little bit more basic, we see that the applications that it comes up with um, are pretty much typical for XFCE. It does have everything you're expecting to see. Uh, leap, leaf pad, of course, for notepad taking. Uh, I want to say that's Oraj, but that's terrible. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but I know that that is a major application for working with calendaring and so forth. We look back, it does have the Thunar file manager. We go into development. I installed QD4 because I needed QD4 to get uh, a few things running for myself. Otherwise, it only came with Meld and Gini. Inside of graphics, it did have the GIMP and interest, interesting enough uh, 
Slackle and Slackware both had come with Caligra uh, Office, whereas Salix comes with LibreOffice. But as you can see, the piles and graphics are very small. What you will notice here is we don't have a games directory. If we go into Internet, it's using Midori, which is a very lightweight, small um, internet browser. It has crashed a few times on me just getting to a few sites, so a little unhappy with that. But I didn't want to install f a lot of programs that would take away from what you should expect if you were to install Salix. It does have Pigeon for its instant messenger services. And while it, ha it also is using uh, YCD for the network manager, which was easy enough to configure down here with its, its tab and went right in for me with no problems right out of the box. In multimedia, it's using Excel, and Excel is a really nice lightweight CD and music player. I've used it in the past and actually been very happy with it. In fact, I'd probably still use it um, today if it wasn't for finding Clementine, which I just find I like a little bit more. But as for a lightweight CD streaming and CD player and all the rest, Excel is very well done. Very happy with it. Now, I haven't installed the multimedia codecs just yet. I've gone ahead and made other things work without them, but I'm sure that that would fi be um, fixing some of the problems I have with uh, being able to play certain media. I did have to install VLC just so I could get MP4 to work. If I installed the media multimedia codecs, though, that probably would have worked without having to do that. We move on here. I installed the simple screen recorder so I can record what I'm working on. And as I said, I did also VLC and the GUVC viewer so I can have my good old mug shown for you. We go on into Office, we see that it has the full LibreOffice 4.0 suite, the calendaring system, which I am sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that properly. Someday I will have to check. And then in System, we have a few different things that we can look at. Of course, it has the Thunar file manager, which is also up above. And we see Sorcery Slack Build Manager is there to note. We also will note that G Slapped was there. And Gigolo, which, if I remember right, is a networking tool to map network drives as such. Everything else is what you expect to see for XFCE. It runs very fast. It installed quite well. Um, it's still a text-based installation. There were no issues going through it. This being my third or fourth time in the last two or three weeks to install a Slackware-based distribution, it was very easy. Um, it did do a few things different uh, than even Slackware did. It allowed for a user creation right in the installation, whereas Slackware pretty much allowed for you to install and set up the root user but did not allow for a general user to be created. Salix did allow for that to be involved with the uh, install process instead of having to do it later on. Salix has been maintained for a while uh, to, to keep up with the Slackware distribution and the repos. It's fully backwards compatible with all Slackware products. It seems to be very good and the XFCE does seem to run quite quickly on it. Once again, just as I found with Slackware and even Slackle, you do have to do a lot of playing with it to get different applications to work. I will just kind of go over since if you're watching this for Salix and you haven't watched my Slackle or Slackware videos, one nice feature that I just really like is making sure to get GSLAP Package Manager installed. You just have to put in your admin password to get it up and running. And when it pops up here, we can see that it has a lot of packages already available. 
if you were to look for something such as say Skype we'll do a search you don't find it no worries we'll just go on into system and look at sorcery and see if it has it in there make some of these a little smaller pull it up and we'll just see if Skype is in there and there we have Skype you if you want to install you check it hit start now what sorcery does is it installs the software from source code from respectable repositories for Salix so it goes and grabs it it checks to make sure that all the dependencies are being met it will fail of course if no dependencies um, are there or if it's it's missing something I did find in the last bit I ran into an issue where it installed it with no problems and I didn't realize that it was a 32-bit application because I've not used Skype too often until recently and so I had to go through of course and get multi-lib 32 to work and then suddenly Skype was working which was a thankful thing from someone making a comment about that so it compiles it it sets it all up it puts it here it should be done here in a moment or two and Skype will be running without a problem it looks like there it goes all tasks are successful okay let's minimize this let's go on back over here to G slap because I know M player for instance is and should be a package that it can do so the nice thing about G slapped is if we want to do that and we tell it to execute it's going to look and it's going to find and see if there's any more packages that it needs to download in this case it's just going to need to download that one it will then download the packages it needs and begin to install one thing I have found that is a little bit of a disappointment with Salix is I'm not sure if their repositories right now are really buggered down or not I'm used to seeing one meg to, to three and four megs per second on my download and as you can see we're getting about 60k per second in my last couple videos I've used Salix repositories to help get some packages and they did run a lot faster so I'm kinda surprised that this one's going as slow as it is going but if we look at this, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this for now there's not much, because I want to find a package that would need some dependencies and so let's say I know Amarok. Amarok is actually a KDE uh, streaming music a CD player and internet music resource if we look at this for instance if we go to the dependencies you will see that there is a long list of dependencies that it's going to require for this it'll also tell you if there's any conflicts and any suggestions that need to be made the nice thing about GSLAPT is it's going to let you install packages and it's going to look for those dependencies and if there is a dependency that it still has within the GSLAP repositories that you've added it's going to grab those and install those for you. That's one negative thing I found with Slackware in general is when you're just using its generic install package commands it doesn't do anything about dependency needs and therefore you find out the hard way you try to install Amarok and it says oh I don't see ACL so then you go and install ACL oh I don't see Attica oh, okay we try to go find that and you have to find each of those and kind of put them together it's not gonna go out and find it you know, that's one nice thing I think I still like about Gen 2 is the dependency distribution within Gen 2 and the portage tree is, is excellent uh, and this is where Slackware is kind of lacking in a bit outside of that though if you're willing to play with it for a while you can make it work and it will be a good OS so whether it's Salix, Slackle or Slackware they're all very good uh, distributions I did like Slackware of, uh, of all three I think Slackware gives you the most pre-built packages that are already on the system if you do a full system build and I've always said when you're unfamiliar with how a system works it's always best to get the latest with the most that you can get it may look a little bloated up front but it's really nice to be able to be able to go through and see all the different package options 
and be able to use those instead of getting a minimalist distribution if you're not familiar with it. When you know what you want, then it's great to go minimalist and just get the bare bones. But if you're still searching for what you might need, then it's great to get more of everything and weed out the packages that you don't want when you realize what's good and what's bad for you. Anyway, I am not going to ramble any further on this. Salix OS, great operating system. Try it out if you like. It's not too big. I believe the ISO is not more than about 600 and a few megs. As I always say, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments. And I've already gotten a request for frugalware for next week. So I'll be downloading that soon, installing it, trying it out, and doing a little first impression video for that too. So until next time, thanks a lot. Bye.